Welcome to Electron Line. To get a better understanding of torsional motion or torsional pendulum, let's do a simple example. So here we have a disc with a mass of 2 kilograms and a radius of 30 centimeters, which is suspended from a wire that has a torsional constant of 20 newton meters. Let's say that the maximum angular displacement is 1.2 radians. Find the frequency of oscillation and find the equation as a function of time for the position of the angle. To do that, we're going to need the moment of inertia of this disc. And since it's a solid disc, we can say that the moment of inertia i is equal to 1 half m r squared, which is 1 half times 2 kilograms times the radius 0 0.3 meters quantity squared. So let's find out. We get 0.3 squared times 2, well, wait a minute, divided by 2, that would be 0 0.09. That was actually an easy equation, wasn't it? So at 0 0.09, and of course the units are kilograms meters squared. Now we have that, we can now find the frequency. The frequency is defined as being 1 over 2 pi times the angular frequency. And for torsional pendulums, that is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of the torsional constant kappa divided by the moment of inertia i. So this is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of, that would be 20 newton meters divided by 0 0.09 kilograms meters squared. And let's see what that's equal to. So 20 divided by 0 0.09, take the square root of that, divide by 2, divide by pi, and we get 2 point, let's say 2.4, that would be 2.4 hertz. So that would be the frequency of oscillation. Next, we want to find an equation that describes that motion. We can say that the solution to the differential equation as a function of time will be equal to the maximum displacement times either the sine or the cosine of omega t, where omega again is equal to, uh, let's see here, the square root of k kappa over i. And so we can say that the angle as a function of time is going to be equal to the maximum, which is 1.2 radians, multiply times the sine of omega, well, omega would be equal to 2 pi f, so it would be 2 pi f times t. And since we already found out what f is equal to, we multiply that times 2 pi, times 2 times pi equals, and we get theta as a function of time is equal to 1.2 radians times the sine of that would be 14.9 over seconds times t. And that would be the equation describing that, that motion. All right, and that's how it's done.